Goodbye, Punch. Goodbye, Judy. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Punch and Judy disappear. <laughs> Now, I have to go, too. I have other children waiting for me. So, Merry Christmas to all. <laughs> Merry Christmas to all. Merry Christmas to you all. Merry Christmas to all. Merry Christmas to all. This is the story of a very strange and special Christmas Eve, long ago in the old city of Nuremberg in Germany. In homes big and small, children had gathered to receive their Christmas gifts. But some children, as we all should know, were not so lucky. Little Marie was only a poor servant girl, and even though this was the most special night of the year, she was not allowed to join the party. She sadly watched the children pluck their presents off the tall and dazzling tree. Her eyes then fell on a funny little toy, a nutcracker. Although the children treated him most roughly, the little man kept on smiling most courteously. Roughest of all was Fritz, the boy of the house. He had so many presents, he didn't take care of a single one, not even the nutcracker. Late that night, after most of the children had all gone home to bed, the house lay dark and quiet. The candles on the Christmas tree slowly flickered out. Outside in the snowy streets, late night merrymakers wound their way homewards. And slowly, the town fell silent. It was well past midnight before Marie could begin the long and lonely task of cleaning up the mess left by the other children. This is no way to spend Christmas Eve, thought Marie. Why don't I pretend? that I'm the royal princess dancing with a handsome gentleman. And so Marie turned her dreary job into fun.
Suddenly, Marie's eyes fell upon the poor little nutcracker lying beneath the tree. A large walnut was still jammed in his mouth. Of all the toys in the room, this nutcracker was certainly the one she loved the most. Carefully taking the walnut out of his mouth, she gave him a kiss. Suddenly, his painted eyes began to sparkle. A real smile formed across his wooden lips. Marie's kiss had brought the nutcracker to life. He gallantly tipped his hat and thanked Marie for her kindness. The little man was overjoyed. But when he saw his reflection in the frosty window, he turned away, horrified. He couldn't believe how silly and ugly he looked. Silly and ugly, cried Marie. Why, I think you're perfectly nice looking. For a nutcracker, that is. And that's just it, he replied. I'm not a nutcracker at all. My real name is Nathaniel, and I am a prince. And so the sad nutcracker began to share his story, a story that began in a small kingdom not far from Nuremberg. It was Prince Nathaniel's first birthday. The king and queen had planned a large and very cheerful party for their baby son. There was music and dancing. From all over the kingdom, gifts were brought for the baby prince. Suddenly there came an ominous sound a scratching and a cracking from deep beneath the floor. It was none other than the very wicked and uninvited Mouse Queen who ruled over the nastiest mice in all the world. The very presence of this despicable despot was enough to make the weak need even weaker in the knees. The Mouse Queen had not come alone. She was accompanied by her son, a contemptibly ill-mannered little rodent. They'd come not to wish the prince a happy birthday, but rather to cast an evil spell upon him. Naughty little offspring, snapped the Mouse Queen at her incorrigible little son. You're not supposed to take the Prince's birthday presents. You're supposed to give him a present, something that shows how we feel about him. And I know just the thing. As the little mouse opened his chubby little arms, his mother began to work her wicked magic. The good queen was pleased. Prince Nathaniel was delighted. The mouse queen snickered with glee. The king tried his best to show his anger. little child I've raised, declared the Mouse Queen. I've always said, three heads are better than one. The king ordered the evil Mouse Queen and her son thrown from the palace. This amused the Mouse Queen, who defiantly plopped herself down and dared him to call out the guards. Which is precisely what the king did. Without so much as a blink, the Mouse Queen conjured up an evil spell that throws the guards into a pile of crushed ice. The king grew even more furious and decided to take things into his own hands. 
I'll give her a taste of steel, he muttered angrily. Fortunately, his sharp and flashing sword proved hardly more than a tasty tidbit for the evil mouse queen. Delicious, your highness. <laughs> Simply delicious. The king was desperate to rid himself of this diabolical creature. It was time to fight fire with fire and magic with magic. He dashed down his secret stairway and unlocked the vault where he kept the magic potion prepared especially for such emergencies. Meanwhile, the Mouse Queen's delinquent son was still up to his loathsome pranks, which delighted no one but his mother. Finally, Prince Nathaniel gave the little mouse a taste of his own medicine. His mother did not appreciate it and fired up her nastiest spells to their nastiest. Just in time, the king managed to group all the magic goop over her head. She promptly disappeared. Almost all of her disappeared, that is, except for her tail, which magically flew through the air and laid its evil spell on the baby prince. The good queen watched in horror as her baby son turned into a nutcracker. The evil power of the Mouse Queen's spell was so great that the good king and queen, all the members of their court, and even the palace itself was frozen under a thick layer of ice. The son of the Mouse Queen snatched up his mother's magic crown and vowed that he and his army of evil mice would someday return and chew the nutcracker to pieces. The years passed, and the son of the Mouse Queen grew up to become the King of the Mice. The Nutcracker knew that he must slay the Mouse King if he was ever able to break the spell and change himself back into Prince Nathaniel. But Marie had little time to think about this amazing story, for the Nutcracker heard a scary, scuttling, scraping noise all around from all directions. The Nutcracker turned in alarm and reached for his sword. It wasn't there. It had been left hanging high in the tree. A loud squeaking was heard. Thousands of little lights began to glitter out from the dark corners of the room. But these were no lights. Everywhere, mice were peeping and squeezing themselves out through the holes in the wall. Troops of mice, battalions of mice, regiments of mice. What now came before Marie's eyes would have caused a grown man to plump into bed and pull the covers up over his head. It was the Mouse King, a bigger and badder bully than before. The very one who had vowed to come back and seek revenge on the poor Nutcracker. The spies for his evil mouse army had searched for the Nutcracker for many years, and finally, they had cornered him. He will make me a perfectly splendid Christmas gift, squeaked the Mouse King smugly. I shall have such fun chewing him to pieces. Before Marie could think of what to do, the Mouse King had turned the power of his magic crown upon her. She set the Nutcracker safely up in the tree just the instant before she began to shrink. The Nutcracker watched helplessly as Tiny Marie was taken prisoner by the Mouse Army. He was able to reach a tiny toy bugle. It was time to rally his troops. The Christmas tree began to sparkle and come to life. A white stallion, the kind of general would ride into battle, galloped toward the Nutcracker.
Drummers, soldiers, dragoons, huzzas, dolls, clowns, stuffed animals all came alive at the bugle call and leapt to the battlefield below. The Nutcracker's little army frightened back the large army of mice. The mice regrouped. The lull before the storm. Suddenly, the Nutcracker charged bravely forward. On to victory, the drums rolled. The artillery leaped into action and let fly with a devastating chocolate bomb. The stuffed animal squadron loosed a volley of hard candy and gingerbread nuts. A fusillade of gumdrops buried the advancing mouse battalions. Again, the nutcracker charged fearlessly forward. Pandalone, scaramouts, bring up the reserves. Wheeling and slashing right and left, he fought his way toward Marie. Even the hideous Mouse King was splattered with his share of sugar plums. Marie was rescued. The Nutcracker and his army were victorious. Realizing that his troops of mice had already lost the battle, the angry Mouse King used his magic powers to turn the Nutcracker's brave army back into harmless toys and to bring his own army back to life. The Nutcracker and Marie were suddenly all alone, face to face with the entire Mouse army. Quickly, without a moment to lose, the Nutcracker spurred his white steed up the side of the tree. He set Marie down safely, just as he was toppled to the floor amidst a sprawling, brawling mass of mouse soldiers. Forced to fight for his very life, the Nutcracker was soon overpowered by the sneaky mice. The cruel Mouse King was triumphant at last. After all these years, he had snared the Nutcracker. He held a quick conference among himself to carefully select the most satisfying method of finishing off his enemy once and for all. The Nutcracker strained to free his sword, but the Mouse King simply disintegrated it with a flick of his magical tail. Marie watched in terror as the brutal king began to wreak revenge on the helpless Nutcracker. Marie knew she couldn't just stand there and do nothing. She had to help. Suddenly, she looked down and saw the heavy wooden shoes she was wearing. Smack, she struck the Mouse King squarely on his nasty royal noggin. He fumbled desperately for his magic crown, but couldn't hold on to it. As it fell to the floor, it shot off one final magic spell, hitting the king, who promptly and quite deservedly disappeared. The mouse soldiers stared in shock at the smelly cloud of smoke that just a moment ago had been their king. One by one, the soldiers began to sneeze. And one by one, they sneezed themselves into oblivion. Little Marie looked down at her wooden shoe as it sparkled. Was it too going to disappear? No, not quite. For the magic had turned it into a beautiful golden slipper. So beautiful, Marie was afraid even to touch it. Nutcracker stepped forward to pick it up, 
And suddenly, the magic that had filled the slipper now poured into him. Marie thought she must be dreaming. There, where just a moment ago the little nutcracker had stood, was now a handsome young man. It was Prince Nathaniel, all grown up and no longer under the evil spell. He presented the bashful Marie with her new golden slipper. As the magic from the slipper flowed into Marie, she began to change from the simple working girl she'd been into an elegant young lady. Thank you, Marie, for saving my life, said Prince Nathaniel. Because you showed me friendship and love, You've helped deliver me from the evil spell and helped change me back into myself. But the prince then offered to take Marie with him to his magical kingdom, the kingdom he had not seen for all these lonely years. As their journey began, they heard the dance of the sugar plum fairies. floated across the Lake of Roses until a palace of marble and sparkling crystal was seen in the distance. The dark palace slowly began to come alive. Lights once again glowed in the windows. Marie, I'm home at last. After all this time, exclaimed the prince. A beautiful bridge of violets and primroses grew across the moat for them to cross. The flowers spread all the way up to the throne like a rolled out carpet. The good king and queen, frozen in grief for all these sad years, slowly came back to life. They turned to see, standing at the far end of the throne room, a beautiful girl and a handsome boy. King and queen looked at the boy ever so closely. Could this be? Yes, yes, it could be. It was their son. The little prince had been turned into a nutcracker years before had been returned to them. Overjoyed, Prince Nathaniel and Marie began to dance a beautiful waltz. The Waltz of the Flower.
And so, on Christmas morning, only Marie's wooden shoes and the broken little man remained beneath the tree. The poor servant girl and the sad nutcracker had become what they were meant to be and had gone to live in their magical kingdom. One.